Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. We say good evening, La Ila to the whole house of Yasha all, to all 12 tribes worldwide, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this Laila, on this night, on this evening. Shalom to you, peace and blessings. Shalom and Barak Ut to you, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this night. To the elder brother, to the elder Ak, Yahuda, to the younger Ak, younger brother Aphraim, to the foreigner, former foreigner, former stranger, former Gentile, former nation, who is now no longer estranged from the everlasting covenant, but having come near and having been and having received the spirit of adoption, the Ruach HaKadush, whereby being engrafted into the olive tree, you are no longer a foreigner or a stranger or a Gentile or a nation, but you are now a fellow citizen of the Bayit, the house of Yasha All. And now you are privy to the very same everlasting covenant and promise and inheritance that was given to Yasha all and to Yasha all alone. Shalom to you, shalom to all 12 tribes. Wherever your feet touch the soil on this evening, shalom and peace and blessings and shalom and bark ut to you and your house, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this evening, shalom. Ms. Parker, uh, uh, to those who are listening on YouTube, uh, once again, we thank you for joining us. You, you will hear this later on. Uh, we are grateful that you have joined Yahuwah's Remnant for our midweek gathering. We pray uh, that you have been edified and encouraged by the teachings and the messages so far. And we pray that you would continue to join, that you would, as you, as, as Yahuwah draws his people out of the nations, back to the ancient path, back to the perfect way, back to the road that leads to everlasting life. We pray that you would continue to join us each week, each Shabbat, and uh, each fourth night as we continue this journey. I am Daud Ban Yahuwah. And this is my Aisha, which is to say wife, Asha Yah. Welcome. Shalom. Welcome. Welcome. Well, we began uh, this past Shabbat uh, with looking at the perfect example of Yahusuf, uh, who was a firstborn. And as Yahuwah spoke through his servant on that day, and as he has been speaking through his servant, he has been relaying to us that there is a requisite behavior that is expected and required of a firstborn. And this past Shabbat, he allowed us to take a detailed look at a firstborn son, at what it looks like and what it means to be a firstborn son, not according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach. Because what Yahuwah wants us to understand, and this is not the first time he has spoken this through his servant, it is utterly impossible to whomever is listening to these words, wherever your feet are touching the soil on this night, it is impossible, listen, hear him, please, to obey the Torah in your flesh. The level of righteousness, the level of perfection that is expected of us is impossible to do in your flesh. You cannot. The only thing that you can accomplish in your flesh with respect or with regard to the Torah is the letter. You cannot, you cannot properly obey and keep the Torah in your flesh. 
The things that Yahusuf did could not be accomplished in the flesh. It could not, it cannot be accomplished in the flesh. Indeed, we cannot obey Torah. We cannot obey Torah in the flesh. One cannot love his neighbor as he loves himself, as we saw in the example of Yahusuf, and as we're going to continue looking at his example tonight. One cannot love his neighbor as he loves himself from the flesh. He cannot. He cannot. You see, this is a disconnect that the masters do not understand, that there is a level of perfection, that there is a level of righteousness that is expected from us, which is perfection, which cannot be accomplished from the flesh. It cannot be accomplished from the flesh. It can only be accomplished via the Ruach. And so that firstborn behavior that we saw in Yahusuf, this was not done from the flesh. This was done from the Ruach. He indeed was a firstborn according to the Ruach. Again, Ra'uban was the firstborn according to the flesh. He was firstborn according to Ruach. And the things that we have witnessed and saw could not be accomplished via the flesh. Indeed, the things in the example that we see in the Hamashiach, Yahusha, Hamashiach himself, he did not do in the flesh. He could not have accomplished those things in the flesh. They could only be accomplished by being a firstborn according to the Ruach. They can only be accomplished by, by being firstborn according to the Ruach. We see another example of this in the scriptures with regards to the rich, with regards to the rich young ruler. When he approached Yahusha and said, good teacher, what must I do to inherit again everlasting life? And the rich young ruler replied, what is written in the Torah? How do you read it? And the rich young ruler began to exclaim about loving his neighbor and, um, and, um, and, and uh, loving his brother. Uh, he began to exclaim some commandments and uh, Yah and he and, and Yahusha responded to him by saying, do this and you shall live. Do this and you shall live. Let me back up. That's that's a different encounter. That's a different encounter. Yahusha began in this encounter to exclaim some of the commandments that he was to keep. And the rich young ruler responded by saying, all these I have kept my whole life. Since I was a youth, since I was a child, all these I have kept my whole life. Yahushua said this to him. He says, but you lack one thing. If you want to be what? If you want to be perfect. If you want to be perfect, sell all your possessions and give them to the poor. The text declares that the rich young ruler went away sad because he had many possessions. His taught ones then came to him afterwards and said, well, who is able to be saved? Yahushua declared that, uh, that what is impossible for man is not impossible for Yahuwah. In other words, this rich young ruler was trying to keep the Torah from the flesh. Yes, he obeyed the commands from the flesh, but he, ref but he uh, neglected to understand that there's a higher level of righteousness and perfection that is, that is expected of us that can only be done via the Ruach. You see, had he been operating in a Ruach, he would have been willing to give up all. He, he would have understood that the temporary riches and possessions of this life pale in comparison to the treasure and the, and the rain that, that, is, that is being prepared for those who love him and who obey him in accordance with Ruach, in accordance with the Ruach. Indeed, there are crowns being prepared. There are thrones being prepared. There are treasures being prepared. Indeed, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor the mind, I'm paraphrasing, neither can the mind 
comprehend the things that Yahuwah has prepared for those who love him. He was storing up his treasures on earth in accordance with a firstborn, according to the flesh. The flesh could not do that. The flesh could not sell everything that he has and give it to the poor. But someone who is operating according to the Ruach can easily do that, can easily give up all, can easily give up everything that they have. And so there is a level of righteousness, a level of perfection. Hear him. That is expected of us that cannot be accomplished in the flesh. Indeed, if you call yourself a son of righteousness, which is to say what? Which is to say that you are a son of the rain, which is to say that you are a Yashalim. If you profess and uh, if you boldly speak that you are a Yashalim, a firstborn, not according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach, you must understand that there is a higher level of righteousness, a higher level of perfection that you and I cannot accomplish in this flesh. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. And so Yahuwah gave us a glimpse of some of that this past Shabbat in looking at the behavior of that righteous man, of that perfect man, of that firstborn, according to the flesh, named Yahusaf, commonly called Joseph. And so tonight uh, we will continue and finish up where we left off prayerfully and finish up where we left off and, and looking at some of the Behavior, the perfect behavior of a firstborn and prayerfully uh, learning how to align ourselves. We're prayerfully seeking Yahuwah, seeking Yahuwah for more of the indwelling of his Ruah so that our lives, our lives can reflect that kind of perfection, which is the level of perfection that we see in all of our righteous fathers, which is the level of perfection that we see in Yahusha Hamashiach, that same level of that that same level of righteousness and perfection is expected of us. It is expected of us. Before we begin, I'm, 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 Abba has uh, I, I'm, I'm led to to discuss something briefly, uh, just 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 real briefly to just to just hammer this point on that that listen, listen. Please hear, you're not a Yashalim according to the flesh. You're, you're, you're not a Yashalim according to the flesh. You are a Yashalim according to the Ruach. All your genealogy is going to do is to get you invited to a barbecue. Your genealogy does it, it, it's not the determining factor of you or I becoming a Yashalim. This is determined by the indwelling of the Ruach HaKadosh. These are not my words. These are the words of the master. When speaking to Nachdaman, commonly called Nicodemus, he said to him, truly, truly, I say unto you, unless a man is born from above, he cannot see the reign of Elohim. He was a Yahudim. A Yashalim, according to the flesh, a son of Abraham, according to the flesh. Yet Yahusha told him, unless you are born from above, you cannot see the reign of Elohim. You cannot see the reign of Elohim. Uh, you cannot inherit. Indeed, only firstborns are going to inherit. Only true Yashalim are going to inherit. Only true Yashalims are going to inherit. True firstborns, according to the Ruach. And so taking a look at this, because this has to do with perfection. This has to do with perfection. And again, perfection is expected of firstborn sons. 
You cannot do the Torah. You cannot do righteousness unless you are born from above. And if you're not doing righteousness, then you're not a firstborn son. You are not a firstborn son. You are not a Yashalim if you are not doing righteousness. Not according to the flesh, not according to the letter, but according to the Ruach. So taking a look at this, just to take a look at this, just as a segue into the continuation of this teaching. Turn to Husha, the 11th chapter. Husha. Husha. Commonly called Joshua, the 11th chapter. Husha. Commonly called Joshua, the 11th chapter. Beginning, beginning at verse 1. Oh, I pray, my master, as this goes to the four corners of the earth, that someone is getting this, master. That they are listening, Master, and that they are getting deep down and in the fast in a an understanding that there is a higher level of expectation that is required and is expected of us that cannot be accomplished in this wicked flesh. It can only be accomplished via your righteous rule, Hakadosh. You expect perfection. You expect righteousness. You desire righteousness. You desire for us to do righteousness. Because indeed, it is not the hearers of the Torah that are declared righteous, but the doers of the Torah that will be declared righteous. Not in the flesh. Our ancestors tried it and they perished. According to the Ruach, you cannot keep Torah in your flesh. You cannot. You cannot keep Torah in your flesh. The level of perfection and, and righteousness that is expected of us, we cannot, we cannot do in our flesh. We cannot do. Who shall? Hosea, the 11th chapter, the first verse. Read, little one. When Yasharel was a child, I loved him. And out of Mitzrayim, I called my son. When Yasharel was a child, I loved him. And out of Mitzrayim, I called my son. When Yashar was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. Keep your finger on that and keep that fresh in the, in, in the frontal lobe of your nafash as we turn now to Matat Yahu or Matthew, the second chapter. What verses, little one? 2, 13 through 15. Matthew, Matat Yahoo, the second chapter, verses 13 through 15. Matthew, Matat Yahoo, the second chapter, verses 13 through 15. Beginning at verse 13, we read now. And when they had left, see a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to Yahusuf in a dream. And when they had left, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to Yahusuf in a dream. When they had left, when they had left Yerushalayim, because of, uh, 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 go, go ahead, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. When they had left, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to Yahusuf in a dream. Read. Saying, Arise, take the child and his mother and flee the Matraim. Mm -hmm. And remain there until I bring you word from Herodes. Mm-hmm is about to seek the child to destroy him. Mm -hmm. And rising up, he took the child and his mother by night and departed for Mitzrayim mm -hmm. and remained there until the death of Herodes mm -hmm. to feel what was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet. Listen. Saying, out of Mitzrayim, I have called my son. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. Who should 11 chapter declare it? When Yahshua all was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. In Matat Yahu, the second chapter, we learned that Herodes wanted to uh, take the life of the Hamashiach. But a messenger appeared to Yahusuf, uh, his father, according to the flesh. Uh, he did not. Uh, he, he is not the father of Yahusuf. Yah Yahusha. Yahusha was was conceived via the Ruach as a perfect man, not via the corrupt seed of man, not via the corrupt seed of man. But he was married to the mother of Yahusha. And so he was considered his father. Nevertheless, a messenger appeared to him, saying to him, take the child and go down to Egypt. Go down to Masrayim, for Herodes wants to take his life. And he, was, and he remained in Egypt until the death of Herodes, until that same messenger appeared to Yahusuf. 
Yahusaf, uh, uh, instructing him that now Herodes is dead, bring the child back. And the text declares that this was in order to fulfill what was spoken by the Nabi. Out of Egypt, I call my son. Wait a minute, teacher. I thought Yashaol was his son. I thought Yashaol is his son. Yashaol is his son. Yashaol is his son. Keep reading, little one. Isaiah 11 1 is Isaiah the 11th chapter the first verse Isha Yahu the 11th chapter the first verse Isha Yahu the 11th chapter the first verse Isaiah the 11th chapter the first verse read little one and a rod shall come forth from the stump of Yashai. And a rod shall come forth from the stump from Yashai. And a sprout from his roots shall be fruitful. And a sprout, a sprout, a branch from his roots, from his roots shall be fruitful. In other words, he shall do righteousness. He shall Feel the righteous requirement of the Torah, which is to do righteousness. He shall do it. You see, what you don't understand, those of you who boast in your genealogy, the natural vine, the natural vine, Yasha all according to the flesh, broke the everlasting covenant. They broke both the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, broke the everlasting covenant. And the natural vine was uprooted from the land and scattered to the four corners of the earth. But Yahuwah left a stump. He left a root which was planted in righteousness, which has grown up to become a righteous tree, an olive tree. A righteous olive tree has grown up to become righteous. You see, Yahusha, the text said it in Matthew chapter 2, Yahusha is Yasha all. Oh, you don't understand. Yahusha is Yasha all. Yahusha is the olive tree. Yahusha is the second Adam. By whom, if we are joined to this olive tree, we are Yashalim, and we are descended from the second Adam. If you are not joined to this olive tree, then you are not a Yashalim. You are not descended from the second Adam. You are still descended from the first Adam, and you will die. You are going to die, because as it has been written, the day that you partake of that fruit, it's the day that you will die. If you refuse to engraft into this olive tree, then that judgment that was pronounced over the first Adam is still applicable to you. I do you not understand that this is all about the reconciliation of Adam, his firstborn, and whom Yashaol is a representation of. If you are not engrafted into this olive tree, which is Yahusha, which is Yashoal, then you are not a Yashalim. You do not belong to him. As we read in Romans the 8th chapter and the ninth verse, if we do not have the Ruach of Elohim, if we do not have the Ruach of the Mashiach, then this one is not his. You are not a Yashalim. You are not a Yashalim. You see, it, it's never been about the flesh, you genealogist. It's never been about the flesh. It has always been about the Ruach. It has always been about spiritual matters. Always been about spiritual matters. Do you think you're smarter than Yahuwah? Yahuwah, Yahuwah has always had a plan in place for us. Oh, he left a righteous root, a stump. In Yasha all, which has grown up into a righteous olive tree because the natural vine could not behave 
and, and transgressed the everlasting covenant and was scattered to the four corners of the earth. The only way for us to get back is to engraft into the olive tree, which is Yahusha, which is Yashua'al, who is the second Adam, the firstborn son. Hmm. And unless you were joined to this olive tree, you can't do righteousness. You can't do righteousness unless he is in you and you are in him. Unless you are joined to the branch as branches, he in you, you in him, you can't do righteousness. The level of righteousness that is expected of us and the level of perfection that is expected of us, we cannot do in the flesh. We cannot do it. Our ancestors tried. They tried and they died. Read, little one. John 15, 1 through 5. Yahukanan 15, because you don't believe me yet. Yahukanan 15. Yahukanan 15. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Yahusuf understood the spiritual matters. He was first born according to the Ruach. This is how he was able to do righteousness, the level of righteousness that is expected of a firstborn. John, Yahukanan, chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. And it is only these firstborn who are going to be redeemed from the earth and who are going to be saved from the hour of trial. Only the firstborn according to the Ruach. True Yashalim. True Yashalim. True Yashalim. Born not from the Yerushalam above, which is the Yerushalam according to the flesh, which is bondage, which is bondage, which is slavery, which represents the transgression of the everlasting covenant. But reborn from the Yerushalam above, being a citizen of the Yerushalam above, being being reborn in perfection, being conceived not with the uh, not with the imperfect seed of man, but conceived via the Ruach Hakadosh in the same way that Adam was conceived, and in the same way that Yahusha was conceived. Only these are going to be redeemed from the hour of trial, and are going to sing on Mount Zion a song that no one else can sing. Indeed, you can't do righteousness. You can't do righteousness in your flesh. The level of perfection that is, that is expected of us uh, and, 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 that, and that we have seen via the example of Yahusa, we can't do in the flesh. We cannot do in the flesh. John 15, verse 1 through 5, beginning at verse 1. Read, little one. I am the true vine. I am the true vine. Listen, I just told you he was the vine. He was the branch. He was divine. He was that sprig, that stout, that stump that was left in the land. The stump of Ishai that was planted in righteousness. Yes, the original vine was planted in righteousness, but they didn't do righteousness. So they were uprooted from the land. But that stump was still planted in righteousness. You see, Yahshua all has always been Yahusha. Yahshua all has always been Yahuwah. He and us, us and him. It has always been him. Always been him. It's never been about the flesh. It's never been about the flesh. He says, I am the true vine. I am true Yasha all. I am true Yasha all. I'm the vine. I am the stump of Ishai. I am Yasha all. And what? And my father is the gardener. And my father's the gardener. Every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch in me that bears no fruit. He takes away. He takes away. Every not sarin branches or branch not saw that bears no fruit. The fruit, what fruit? The fruit of righteousness. Righteousness. Fruit is righteousness. And unless you are bearing the type, the level of fruit that is expected of you, that is expected of us, what does it say? And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. Every branch that bears no fruit, he takes away. He takes away. He takes away. 
You can't bear that level of fruit, that level of righteousness apart from him, apart from the olive tree, apart from the true Yashar, apart from he being in us and us being in him, whereby making us Yashalim, whereby restoring us to the everlasting covenant that he made with Adam. Read. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes mm -hmm. so that it bears more fruit. So that it bears more fruit, so that it bears more righteousness. More righteousness. Mm -hmm. This is where the affliction comes in. Daoud said, I was glad that I was afflicted. What does he say? Barak Yahuwah. <laughs> Barak Yahuwah. Yahuwa. Come on, read. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Uh huh. Stay in me and I stay in you. Stay in me and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself. As the branch is unable to bear righteousness of itself. Read. Unless it stays in the vine. Unless it stays in the vine. See, so neither you unless you stay in me. Uh huh. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the vine, I am true, Yasha. I am the stump of Yeshayi. And you are the branches. You are Yashalim. In other words, what he is saying here is I am Yashal and you are Yashalim. Read. He who stays in me and I in him. Yes. He bears more fruit. He bears much fruit. Uh huh. Because without me, you are able to do not. Because without him, who is he? The Ruach HaKadush. Without him, you are able to do nothing. We can't bear the level of fruit. The level of righteousness that is expected of us apart from him, apart from the Ruach HaKadosh. And if you and if you are apart from him, you are not a Yashalim. I don't care about your genealogy and neither does he. Neither does he. If you're not connected to him, you are not a Yashalim. You are not a Yashalim bears fruit. Yashalim bears the fruit of righteousness. Bears the fruit of righteousness. Oh, yes, indeed. Adam is a Yashalim. Yes, he is. Oh, you think Yashal began with Yahakub. Adam is a Yashalim because his father is Yashal. Do you not think that Adam is going to be in the kingdom? There are only 12 gates that leads to the city. And Adam is going to enter through one of them. So is Nuuk. So is Kanuk. So is Abraham. So is Iskot, who did not have the title of Yashalim in accordance with the scriptures. But they were indeed Yashalim because their father is Yashal. He is the olive tree. He is the tree of life. He is the tree of life. And neither he nor I care about your genealogy. If you don't bear the fruit of righteousness, the level of righteousness that is expected of a firstborn, you are not a Yashalim. You are not a Yashalim. You are Yashalim, perhaps according to the flesh, who broke the everlasting covenant. And you are still estranged from the everlasting covenant. Because the dung, the blood of the everlasting covenant, which is Rook, has not been applied to you. It has not been applied to you. So my father led me to speak that and I pray. That this goes to the four corners of the Arats. Because there are many doing foolishness. There are many doing foolishness. That have an understanding according to the flesh. And are trying to obey according to the flesh. There is much foolishness going on. You don't understand that you're still estranged from the everlasting covenant. That you are not a Yashalim. You are not a Yashalim. You're not his firstborn son. You're not. You're not. So I pray that this, this, this brief encounter reaches whom it was sent to reach. And that you seek his Ruach unlike you've ever sought him before. Basham Yahusha. Basham Yahusha. Basham Yahusha. Continuing now. Actually, we got one more text. Yeah. One more text. I'm sorry. First Corinthians. 15, 45. First Corinthians 15. 45 to 50. First Corinthians. The 40, the, uh, first Corinthians 15. 45. First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 
verses 45 through 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 45 through 50. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 45 through 50. Beginning at verse 45, we and read. And so it has been written, mm -hmm. the first man, Adam, yes. became a living being. Became a living being. The last Adam, a living, giving spirit. The last Adam, a life-giving ruach. Do you understand? That you are not a dumb, that you are not firstborn, that you are not the second a dumb, that you are not Yasha all, unless you have been born of Ruach. And unless you've been born of Ruach, you cannot, you cannot accomplish the level of righteousness and perfection that is expected of us as a firstborn. Read, little one. The spiritual, however, was not first, uh -huh. but the natural. But the natural. And the natural broke the everlasting covenant. Yes, Adam did. No different than the representation of Adam, the natural, the fleshly Yashar, all the one according to the flesh. Read. And afterward, the spiritual. Uh-huh. The first man was of the earth. Uh-huh. Earthly. Yes. The second man is the master from heaven. Yes. As is the earthly, so also are those who are earthly. Uh-huh. And as is the heavenly, so also are there those who are heavenly. That's why your flesh can't obey the Torah. Your flesh is earthly. The Torah is spiritual. It is from Shamayim. It is Yahoo. That's why your flesh can't obey it. You don't understand. You're reading the letter and think that you are accomplishing the Torah, but you can't accomplish the level of righteousness that is expected of us in your wicked flesh. Read, little one. And as we have borne the likeness of the earthly, yes, we shall also bear the likeness of the heavenly. We shall also bear the likeness of the heavenly. But he has given us a down payment via his Ruach HaKadosh. We do not yet bear the likeness of the heavenly. We do not yet bear the likeness of Yashar'al, of Yahuwah. We do not yet bear that likeness. We will not yet bear that likeness until after the thousand year millennial rest of the Hamashiach. When as it reads in 1 John, the third chapter, we do not yet know what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall, we shall see him as he is because we shall be what? Like him. We shall be like him. And so we are being renewed. We are being transformed from esteem to esteem to the very image of Yahuwah. We're being transformed to that. But in the meantime, for those who love him, who truly love him, he's given us a down payment via his Ruach HaKadosh, who is separating us and who has separated us from darkness into light and who causes us to have a love for the Torah and a willingness to obey it in righteousness and truth and in perfection. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. So continuing now, picking this up again, Looking at the righteous example of Yahusuf, who was first born according to the Ruach, who was perfect. Looking at that perfect example of which one cannot accomplish in the flesh. He was not first born according to the flesh. He was first born according to the Ruach. Again, I have to remind you, Rauban was first born according to the flesh. But it was Joseph, it was Yahusuf who received the inheritance from his father. He was firstborn, according to the Ruach, no different than his father, Yahakub, who was also firstborn, according to the Ruach, as Esau was firstborn, according to the flesh. And so continuing this now, we will try to read through this this evening, uh, but if we don't get through the remainder of this book, and that book is uh, Joseph and Asenath, Yahusuf and Asenath, if we don't get through this this evening, Yahuwah willing, we will finish it up on the Shabbat Yom. Yahuwah willing, we will finish it up on the Shabbat Yom. We left off in chapter 7. We're going to pick this up again in chapter 8. Chapter 8 of the book, Asanath and Joseph. Yahusuf and Asanath. Beginning in chapter 8, we read. Then her mother went up into the loft and brought Asanath to Yahusuf. And Pati Farah said to her, Kiss your brother because he also is a virgin even as you today and hates every strange woman even as you hate every strange man. Indeed, if you are not a virgin, Mashpaka, not according to the flesh, 
because some of you have had lost that a long time ago. A virgin, according to the Ruach, this virginity, this virginity is symbolic of us being uh, being patrolled to one husband, being patrolled to one husband and keeping ourselves pure and keeping ourselves undefiled from lying with any other spiritual being, from lying with any other spiritual husband, from obeying any other husband, from obeying any other mighty one, keeping ourselves pure, spotless and undefiled. Because as it is written in the Torah, if when we go into the wedding chamber, because there will be a wedding feast, when we go into the wedding chamber, if it is found that we are not undefiled, that we are not pure, that we are not virgins, then we are going to be taken out and cast into the outer darkness. In other words, according to the Torah, we're going to be taken outside of our father's house and stoned. This is what the Torah says. And so this has a spiritual implication. Yahuwah is not worried about the flesh. He is indeed worried about the flesh in terms of obedience, but it's, it's further it, that there is a deeper meaning that he wants us to get with respect to being a virgin. Read, little one. And Asenaf said to Yahusuf, Hail, Master, blessed <clears throat> of Yahuwah al Ayun. And Yahusuf said to her, Allahim, who quickens all things, shall bless you, girl. Pati Farah said then to his daughter, Asenaf, Come and kiss your brother. When Asenath then came up to kiss Yehusuf, Yehusuf stretched forth his right hand and laid it on her breast between her two paps, for her paps were already standing forth like lovely apples. And Yehusuf said, It is not proper for a man who worships Yah, who blesses with his mouth the living Yahuwah and eats the blessed bread of life and drinks the blessed cup of immortality and is anointed with the blessed unction of incorruption of uh, incorruption to kiss a strange woman who blesses with her mouth dead and deaf idols and Ooh, eats from their table. Wait, you got to read that again. Okay. Oh, you got to read that. The words of this firstborn. They don't understand. Read the first, the words of that firstborn again. Read, please. And Yahusuf said, it is not proper for a man who worships Yah. It is not proper for a man who worships Yah. Who blesses with his mouth. Who blesses with his mouth. The living Yahuwah. The living Yahuwah. And eats the blessed bread of life. And eats the blessed bread of life. And drinks the blessed cup of immortality. And drinks the blessed cup of immortality. And is anointed. Ooh. And is what? Anointed. Mm. Is what? Anointed. And is anointed. He is a firstborn according to the Ruach. Listen. With the blessed unction of incorruption. With the blessed unction of incorruption, which is the Ruach HaKadosh. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Come on. To kiss a strange woman mm -hmm. who blesses with her mouth dead and deaf idols mm, mm, and mm, eats mm, from their table mm, the bread mm, of mm, strangling mm. and drinks from their libation the cup of deceit and is anointed with the unction of destruction. Oh, and is anointed with the anointed of destruction. Oh, she had snake oil, you see. She had snake oil. Yeah, all these, all these uh, prophets and prophetess calling themselves prophets and prophetess who are diviners. You see, they do prop, they do prophesy. Yes, they got, they prophesy. See, it's all about the oil. You see, well, but, 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 but that, it, 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 and, and that boils down to if whether or not you have the oil of the ruach or, or, or whether or not you have snake oil, you're divining by the spirit of python. No, don't touch me. Don't kiss me. No, I am firstborn according to the Ruach. Do not touch me. Do not put your lips on me. No, do not put your lips on me. Read. But the man who worships Elohim will kiss his mother and the sister who was born of his mother. Oh, mm-hmm. And the sister who was born of his tribe. Yes. And the woman who shares his couch. Yes. Who bless with their mouth the living Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Likewise, also, it is not proper for a woman who worships Elohim to kiss a strange man. For that, this is an abomination in the sight of Yahuwah Elohim. Barak Yahuwah. Yeah, we'll kiss a sister. A, a, a sister who has the same father as I do. 
who is Yahuwah, who is Yahuwah, but we do not kiss strange women. We do not just go around kissing strange women who are blessing idols. There is, a, there is an expectation of us to remain separated. You don't have to kiss them. You don't have to put your lips on them. There is an expectation that is expected of us, of both men and women who have the unction of the Ruach HaKadosh, who were first born according to the Ruach. Read. And when Asenath heard these words from Yehusaf, she was sorely distressed and groaned. And as she was looking steadfastly at Yehusaf, with her eyes open, they were filled with tears. And Yehusaf, when he saw her weeping, pitied her exceedingly, for that he was mild and merciful and one who feared Yahuwah. Then he lifted up his right hand above her head and said, Yahuwah Elohim of my father, Yasharal, al Ayun and al Shaddai, who quickened all things and called from the darkness to the light and from error to truth and from death to life, bless you this virgin also and quicken her and renew her with your Ruach HaKadosh and let her eat the bread of life and drink the cup of your blessings. Barak Yahuwah. And number her with your people whom you choose before all things were made and let her enter into your rest which you prepared for your elect and let her live wait, in wait, your wait, eternal wait, wait, life wait, 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 wait. And let her enter into your rest. So he's praying that she be accepted into the family of Yashar All. The rest, the Shabbat, was only given to Yashar All. It was given to Yashar All. I told you Adam was a Yashalim. Yes, it was. Yes, 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 he was. He was a Yashalim. And he passed down the Shabbat to all his righteous sons. They kept the Shabbat too. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. The Shabbat was only given to Yashalim. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And so he's praying here that Yahuwah changes her heart, gives her his Ruach, so that she is no longer a Gentile because he's not going to marry a Gentile. We're commanded to what? To not become even, unevenly yoked with them. The Torah tells us to not give our sons to their daughters or our daughters to their sons. Uh, we're not to become unevenly yoked with them. We're to what? Wherefore, come out from among them. Touch not, uh, uh, touch, be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, and he will receive us. And so he's praying here that she has a change of heart. And this is for all of you who say that a Yashalim cannot marry a, a, a Gentile. Well, if they, if they receive the Ruach of Yahusha and they keep the same Torah that we keep in righteousness, not according to the flesh, but according to the Ruach, if they keep the same Torah, if they do righteousness, if they bear the fruit of righteousness like root, like root and like Rahab and, and like Asana, they are no longer Gentiles. They are fellow citizens of Yasha all, having the same rule and having the same father. Barak Yahuwah. Read. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. And Asana rejoiced over the blessing of Yahusuf with exceedingly great joy. Then she has hastened and came up into her loft by herself and fell upon her bed in infirmity, for that there was in her joy and sorrow and great fear, and a continuous sweat poured out of her when she heard these words from Yehusaf. And when he spoke to her in the name of Elohim, al Ayum, then she wept with great and bitter weeping, and she turned in penitence from her Elohim, whom she was accustomed to worship, and the idols which she spurned and waited for even to come. But Yehusaf ate and drank, and he told his serving men to yoke the horses to their chariots and to go around all the lands. And Pati Farad said to Yehusaf, Let my master lodge here today, and in the morning you shall go your way. And Yehusaf said, No, but I will go away today, for that this is the day on which Elohim began to make all his created things. And on the eighth day I also return to you and will lodge here. Barak Yahuwah. Chapter 10. Chapter 10. And when Yehusaf had left the house of Padi, Fari also and all his kindred departed to their inheritance. And Asenath was left alone with the seven virgins, listless and weeping till the sunset. And she neither ate bread nor drank water, but while all slept, she herself alone was awakened, weeping, and frequently beat her breast with her hand. 
And after these things, Asenath rose from her bed and went quietly down the stairs from the loft. And on the coming to the gateway, found the port, portress sleeping with her children. And she hastened and took down from the door the leathern cover of the curtain and filled it with cinders and carried it up to the loft and laid it on the floor. And she thereupon she set the, shut the door securely and fastened it with the iron bolt from the side and groaned with great groaning together with very great weeping. But the virgin whom Asenath loved above all the virgins, having heard her groaning, hastened and came to the door. After awakening, the other virgins also found it shut. And when she had listened to the groaning and the weeping of Asenath, she said to her from without, What is it, my mistress, and why are you sad? And what is it that troubles you? Open to us and let us see you. And Asenath said to her, being shut inside, Great and grievous pain has attacked my head, and I am resting in my bed, and I am not able to rise and open to you, for I am infirmed over all my limbs. Go each of you to your chamber and sleep, and let me be still. And when the virgins had departed, each to her own chamber, Asenath rose and opened the door of her bedroom quietly, and went away into her second chamber, where the chest of her adornment were. And she opened her coffer and took a black and somber tunic, which she put on and mourned when her firstborn brother died. Having taken then this tunic, she carried it into her chamber and again shut the door securely and put the bolt to from the side. Then after thereof, Asenath put off her royal robe and put on the mourning tunic and loosened her golden girdle and girded herself with a rope and she put off the tiara, that is the mitre from her head and also the diadem and the chains from her hands and her feet were also all laid upon the floor. This, oh. She humbled herself. She humbled herself. She is displaying the character of a daughter of Zion. She is displaying the character now of a firstborn. She is humbling herself because we all must humble ourselves. We all must become meek and humble and lowly, which fasting represents. We all must become servants. We all must become servants. And as we continue to read this story, you're going to see how she took on the nature of a servant, how she took on the character and the nature of a daughter of Zion. You, we're going to see this transformation. And so this indeed is also a lesson to our sisters who are looking to the ancient path, who are looking to what the behavior looks like of a woman, a daughter of Zion, what that behavior, what that perfect character look like. I, I pray that you're paying attention now to Asana, who is now humbling herself. She is afflicting herself. She is taking off her diadem and uh, taking off her royal garments and she's bringing herself down low. She's making herself meek and humble because indeed this is what this is whom Yahuwah will receive. He does not receive the proud. He rejects the proud. We must come to him meek and humble and lowly. Indeed, this is the character and nature of a firstborn according to the Ruach, whether you are man or woman. Read. Then she took her choice robe and the golden girdle and the mitre and her diadem, and she cast them through the window that looked toward the north to the poor. And thereupon she took all her alahim that were in the chamber, the alahim of gold and of silver, whereof there was no number, and broke them up into fragments, and cast them through the window to poor men and beggars. And again, Asenath took her royal dinner and the fatlings and the fish and the heifer's flesh and all the sacrifices of her Elohim and the vessels of the wine of lab Labation and cast them all through the window that looked north as food for the dogs. And after these things, she took the leathern cover containing the cinders and poured them upon the floor. And thereupon she took sackcloth and girded her lawns and she loosed also the net of her hair of her head and sprinkled ashes over her head and she strewed cinders also upon the floor and fell upon the cinders and kept beating her breast constantly with her hands and weeping all the night with groaning until the morning and when Asenath arose in the morning and saw and lo the cinders were beneath her as clay from her tears she again fell upon her face upon the cinders till the sun set 
Thus Asenov did for seven days, not ever tasting anything. Chapter 11. Barak Yahuwah. Chapter 11. And on the eighth day, when the dawn came and the birds were already chirping and the dogs barking at the passerby, Asenath lifted up her head a little from the floor and the cinders whereon she was seated, for that she was exceedingly weary and had lost the power of her limbs from her great humiliation. For Asenath had waxed weary and faint and her strength was failing. And thereupon she turned toward the wall, sitting under the window that looked east. And her head she laid upon her bosom, twining the fingers of her hand over her right knee, and her mouth was shut. And she did not open it during the seven days and during the seven nights of her humiliation. And she said in her heart, not opening her mouth, What shall I do, I the lowly one, or where shall I go? And with whom again shall I hereafter find refuge? Or to whom shall I speak? The virgin who was an orphan and desolate and abandoned by all and hated. All now have come to hate me, and among those even my father and my mother, for that I spurned the Elohim with loathing and made away with them, and have given them to the poor to be destroyed by men. For my father and my mother said, Asenaf is not our daughter, but all my kin also have come to hate me, and all men, for that I have given their Elohim to destruction. And I have hated every man and all who wooed me, and now in this my humiliation I have been hated by all, and they rejoiced over my tribulation. But Yahuwah Elohim of the mighty, Yahusuf, hates all who worship the idols, for he is a jealous Elohim, and terrible against all who worship strange Elohim, for which he has hated me also, because I worshiped dead and deaf idols and blessed them. But now have I shunned their sacrifice, and my mouth has become estranged from their table, and I have no courage to call upon Yahuwah Elohim of heaven, all Alyun, and powerful one of the mighty Yahusim, for that mouth, for that my mouth is polluted from sacrifices of the idols. But I have heard many saying that the Elohim of the Abrim is the true Elohim, and the living Elohim, and the compassionate Elohim, and pitiful, and long suffering, and full of compassion, and gentle, and one who does not reckon the crime of a man who is humble, and especially of one who commits crime and ignorance and does not convict of transgression in the time of the affliction of a man who was afflicted. Accordingly, I also, the humble one, will be bold and will turn to him and seek refuge with him and confess all my crimes to him and pour out my petition before him. And he will have compassion on my misery. For who knows if he will see my humiliation, the desolation of my soul and pity me and will see also the orphanhood of my wretchedness and virginity and defend me for that as I hear he is himself a father of orphans and a consolation of the afflicted and a helper of the persecuted. But in any case, I, the humble one, will behold and will cry to him, will be bold and cry to him. Barak Yahuwah. She okay. says something very integral there. She said that Yahuwah doesn't reckon the crimes of the humble. He does not reckon the crimes of the humble. Why not? Because a humble one will do what? Will submit himself or herself in obedience to his instructions. A humble one will not try to hide his offenses from Yahuwah. A humble one, a humble one will repent, will repent of his or her transgressions. A humble one will seek to do the will and the desire of their father. A humble one, a humble, with a humble one, a humble servant, his desire is their desire. His will is their will. And so he does not reckon the crimes of a humble one. Indeed, the humble, the meek, shall inherit the earth because it is these who are firstborn who seek to do that level of righteousness that is required of them, that level of perfection that is required of them. That takes another level of meekness because in order to accomplish that level of perfection and that level of righteousness, you must completely lose yourself you must completely step out of self. You must completely lose yourself and become a servant, a servant to where you have lost your own desire. You have lost your own will. His will is, is your will. His desire is your desire. We can accomplish this no other way, and he will accept nothing else. 
Read, little one. Chapter 12. Chapter 12. Then Asenath rose up from the wall where she was sitting and raised herself upon her knees and directed her eyes toward heaven and opened her mouth and said to Yahuwah, Adani, Yahuwah of the righteous, who created the ages and give life to all things, who give the breath of life to all your creation, who brought the invisible things out into light, who made all things and made manifest things that did not appear, who lifted up the heavens and founded the earth upon the waters, who fixed the great stones upon the abyss of the water, which shall not be submerged, but are to, to the end during your will. For that you, Yahuwah, said the word, and all things came into being. And your word, Yahuwah, is the life of all your creatures. To you I flee for refuge. Adani, Yahuwah, to you will I cry. Yahuwah, and to you will I confess my crimes. To you will I pour out my petition. Yahuwah, and to you I will reveal my transgressions. Spare me, Yahuwah, spare me, for that I committed many crimes against you. I did lawlessness and wickedness. I have spoken things not to be uttered and wicked in your sight. My mouth, Yahuwah, has been polluted from the sacrifices of the idols of the Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim and from the table of their Elohim. I have transgressed, Yahuwah. I transgressed in your sight both in knowledge and in ignorance. I did wickedness in that I worshiped dead and deaf idols. I am not worthy to open my mouth to you, Yahuwah. I, the miserable Asenath, daughter of Pati Farid, the priest, the virgin and queen, who was once proud and haughty, and one who prospered in my father's riches above all men, but now an orphan and desolate and abandoned of all men. To you I flee, Yahuwah. To you I offer my petition, and to you will I cry. Deliver me from those who pursue me, Yahuwah, before I am taken by them. For as an infant in fear of someone flees to his father and mother, and his father stretches out his hand and catches him up against his breast, you do also. Yahuwah, stretch out your hand upon me like a child-loving father. Catch me out of the hand of the supra-sensual enemy, sensual enemy. For lo, the ancient and savage and cruel lion pursues me. For that he is father of the Elohim of, the, of Mitzrayim, and the Elohim of the idol maniacs are his children. And I have come to hate them, and I made a way with them because they are a lion's children. And I cast all the Elohim of the Mitzrayim from me, and did them away. And the lion of their father, the devil, in wrath against me, is trying to swallow me up. But you, Yahuwah, deliver me from his hand, and I shall be rescued from his mouth. Lest he tear me asunder, and cast me into the flame of fire, and the fire cast me into storm, and the storm prevail over me in darkness, and cast me into the depths of the sea, and the great beast who is from everlasting swallow me up, and I perish forever. Deliver me, Yahuwah, before all these things come upon me. Deliver me, Yahuwah, the desolate and defenseless, for that my father and my mother have denied me and said, Asenath is not our daughter because I broke their Elohim in pieces and made away with them as having wholly hated them. And now I am an orphan and desolate and I have no other hope save you, Yahuwah, nor another refuge save your compassion, you friend of men, because you only are father of the orphans and champion of the persecuted and helper of the afflicted. Have compassion on me, Yahuwah, and keep me pure and virgin, the forsaken and orphan, for that you only, Yahuwah, are a good and gentle father. For what father is sweet and good is you, Yahuwah? For lo, all the houses of my father, Patifari, which he has given me for an inheritance, are for a time and vanishing. But the houses of your inheritance, Yahuwah, are incorruptible and eternal. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Now she is no longer a Gentile. These are not the words of a Gentile. These are not the words of a Gentile. These are the words of a firstborn. And so here, Asenath, she has humbled herself. She has taken on sackcloth and ashes. She has uh, uh, fasted for seven days, and she has humbled herself. She has abased herself. And now we find her here, standing, confessing to Yahuwah. In other words, we see her standing here naked before Yahuwah. You understand? I uh, 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 understand that a, a true firstborn, according to, the, according to the Ruach, will not run and hide and grab their fig leaves. 
They will not do that. Those a, a, a true firstborn, according to the Ruach, will not hear the voice of the father and run for the fig leaves. No, a true firstborn, according to the Ruach, will stand there naked. Naked. Here I am, Abba. I am naked. You see all. You know all. Nothing is hidden from you. Nothing is hidden from you. Have compassion on me. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me of my many crimes because I committed many crimes against you. She was very specific with her crimes that she had committed against Yahuwah. And she was sorrowful for them. She was sorrowful. There was a righteous sorrow in her. A righteous sorrow for the crimes that she had committed to Yahuwah. Yahuwah indeed loves the repentant. He loves the repenter. He loves one who will humble themselves, who will stand there naked, who will stand there naked, who will not run when they hear his voice and run for the fig leaves and try and hide, but will stand there naked before him. Here I am, Abba. Cover my nakedness. Cover my crime. Forgive me of my crimes. Forgive me of the transgressions that I have done against you. This is the action of a firstborn. This is the action of a firstborn. Now, there are many who, who speak according to the flesh and who speak according to the lips. This prayer came from the heart of her. It came from the depths of her soul. It came from her heart. She humbled, her, she humbled herself. She was sincere and she stood there naked before him. Indeed, there is nothing hidden before him. Everything is made plain to him. We can hide nothing from him. We can hide nothing. The best course of action for us to do is to stand there naked. It's to stand naked before him, pleading for his compassion, uh, appealing to his great storehouse of compassion, asking him to please cover our nakedness. How are we doing for time, little one? Oh, yes. 106. 106, 106. We'll read... We'll read one more chapter, maybe two. I know this is the fourth night, and uh, we don't. We certainly don't want to keep some up too late uh, who have to go and and uh, earn their bread uh, from the toil of the soil. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Chapter thirteen. Chapter thirteen. Visit Yahuwah my humiliation and have compassion on my orphanhood. Visit my humility, in other words. Visit. My humility, indeed, he will visit the humble. He will visit you if you're truly humble. If you truly humble yourself, and these are those who have not received this Ruach, if you truly humble yourself, if you truly, truly submit and humble yourself, he will visit you. He will visit the, the poor, the meek, the, the, uh, the humble. He will visit you if you sincerely humble yourself and lie there naked before him. Read. And pity me the afflicted, for lo, I, Yahuwah, fled from all and sought refuge with you, the solitary friend of men. Lo, I left all the good things of the earth and sought refuge with you, Yahuwah, in sackcloth and ashes, naked and alone. Lo, now I put off my royal robe of fine linen and of crimson stuff interwoven with gold and have put on a black tunic of mourning. Lo, I have loosened my golden girdle and cast it from me and girded myself with rope and sackcloth. Oh, listen, see, see, the rich young ruler couldn't do this. The rich young ruler uh, could not sell all, his, sell all of his possessions and give it to the poor because, one, he appeared not to be desperate enough, and he appeared not to be a firstborn according to the Ruach. And so he couldn't accomplish this. You see, this is true repentance. This is, this is a, a righteous sorrow. This is someone who displays the character of a Yashalim, of a firstborn, according to the Ruach. Read, little one. Lo, my diadem and my mitre I have cast from my head, and I have sprinkled myself with cinders. Lo, the floor of my chamber that was paved with many colored and purple stones, which was formerly moistened with ointments and was dried with bright linen cloth, is now moistened with my tears and have been dishonored in that it is strewn with ashes. Lo, my Yahuwah, from the cinders and my tears 
Much clay has been formed in my chamber as on a broad roll. Lo, my Yahuwah, my royal dinner and the meats I have given to the dogs. Lo, I have also, Yahuwah, been fasting seven days and seven nights and neither ate bread nor drank water and my mouth is dry as a wheel and my tongue as horn and my lips as a pot shear and my face has shrunk and my eyes have failed from shedding tears. But you, Yahuwah, Alua, deliver me from my many ignorances and forgive me for that being a virgin and unknowingly I have gone astray. Lo, now all the Elohim whom I worship before in ignorance, I have now known to have been deaf and dead idols and I broke them in pieces and gave them to be trampled on by all men and the thieves spoiled them who were gold and silver and with you I sought refuge. Yahuwah, Elohim, forgive me, Yahuwah, for that I committed many crimes against you in ignorance and I have spoken blasphemous words against my master, Yahusha, and I did not know. I, the miserable, that he is your son. Yahuwah, since the wicked men urged by envy said to me, Yahusha is son of a shepherd from the land of Canaan, and I, the miserable one, have believed them and went astray. And I set him as nothing, and I have spoken wicked things about him, not knowing that he is your son. Mm. For who among men father or will ever father such beauty? Or who else is such as he, wise and mighty as Yahusha? But to you, Yahuwah, I commit him, because for my part I love him more than my soul. Keep him safe in the wisdom of your favor and commit me to him for a handmaid and a bondwoman. Oh, for a <laughs> handmaid and a bondwoman. Mm. Daughters of Zion, you want to see the ancient path? This is the ancient path. And that is for you to become a handmaid and a bondwoman. No different than us, than his firstborn sons becoming servants. This is your path. This is your path. In accordance with 1 Peter chapter 3 and other verses in, in the in the in the Kajus text, this is your path to be a hand woman and a bond woman. See, this is not a Gentile. This is not a Gentile. This is a firstborn according to the Ruach, who has humbled herself, who has become meek and lowly. Someone who does not have a false or a fake humility. This is true humility. And this is a true righteous sorrow. She now is willing to take off her diadem. Take off her royal garments. And asking Yahuwah let, just to make, make me a handmaid and a bondwoman. I want to be my husband's handmaid and bondwoman. Oh, daughters of Zion. Are you, your hand, are you your husband's handmaid and bondwoman? If you're not, you're out of order. Yes, you are. Are you your husband's handmaid and bondwoman? Do you serve him? Do you wash his feet? Are you his handmaid and bondwoman? Husbands, do you serve her? Do you serve her? Do you put her before yourself? Yahushua came to serve us, did he not? And not to be served, he is Yahuwah. He did what? He came to serve his wife, did he not? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He put his wife before himself. He died for his wife. Husbands, do you put your wife before you? See, this is, this is the character and nature of a firstborn. Being a servant, being meek and lowly and humble, the level of righteousness that is required that you can't do in your flesh, that you can't do in your flesh. You can't, a uh, uh, woman, you can't bow to your husband and call him master. And be a handmaid and a bond woman to him in your flesh. To wash his feet. You can't do that in your flesh. Husbands. You can't put her before yourself. And be a servant. Yes you are a servant to her. Just like Yahushua served his wife. You are a servant to her. Yes you are. Yes you are. You are to yes you are to rule over her. But with, with compassion. And with a tender heart. And with loving kindness you are to rule over her. And be willing to die for her. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. The level of righteousness and perfection that is expected of us cannot be accomplished in the flesh. It cannot be accomplished in the flesh. Read, little one. That I may wash his, may wash his feet. Oh, his may what? <laughs> Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't make this stuff up. You, little one. <laughs> Can you make it up? <laughs> Come on, back up a little bit. Back up just a little bit. Back up to, to the bond woman and handmaiden. Then, then, then incorporate this. You can't make it up. 
I'm going to shut up too while you read. Come on. Okay. Keep him safe in the wisdom of your favor and commit me to him for a handmaid and a bondwoman that I may wet, wash his feet and make his bed and minister to him and serve him. And I will be a bondwoman to him for the times of my life. Oh, daughters of Zion. Do you see it? If you can't do this, you ain't a daughter of Zion. You're not a firstborn according to the flesh. This is what is required of you. It's required of you to be a handmaid and bondwoman. You want to be exalted? You must first be a handmaid and bondwoman. Handmaid and bondwoman. Husbands, you want to be exalted? You must first be a servant. You must first be a servant. Are you washing his feet? Can you say this? I just want to be his handmaid and his bondwoman. I just want to wash his feet. I just want to serve him throughout my life. Can you say that, daughter of Zion? Husband, can you serve her like Yahusha served his wife? Dying for her, washing her with the washing of the word, being patient towards her, tenderhearted towards her, lovingly committed towards her, trustworthy towards her, good and kind towards her. Yes, I'm talking about the fruit of the rook. Can you serve her? Can you serve her even when she get on your nerves? Can you serve her? Can you Put her before you. Can you, woman, put him before you and be his handmaid and his bondwoman? If you can't, you're not a firstborn. You're not a daughter of Zion. You're not. Read, little one. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. I think we're going to stop. I think we're going to let them marinate on that for a while. Barak Yahuwah, we pray that they, they've gotten enough to marry on, marinate on. And we'll, we'll pick up chapter 14, Yahuwah willing. Uh, on the Shabbat day and we'll Yahuwah willing finish this out on the Shabbat day we pray that as these messages go out to the four corners of the earth that uh, this seed that is being scattered is uh, not being scattered upon dry and brittle ground but that it is being scattered upon fertile or fer fertilized and teal soil that this seed is not being scattered by the wayside it's not being scattered on stony ground, that it is not being scattered amongst thorns, but it indeed is being scattered in that teal and fertilized soil that is receptive for this seed, such that the watering will come via the living water, via the Ruach Hakadush, to water that seed so that it grows up to become a mighty tree, producing the fruit that leads to everlasting life. It is my prayer that as this goes out to the four corners of the Arats, that your children are being edified, that they're being encouraged, that they're now understanding what it takes to be called a firstborn, that they're understanding that the level of perfection and righteousness that is required and expected of a firstborn cannot be accomplished via this wicked flesh. I pray, Master, that this word that has been spoken through your servant will not return void, but will accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do. In the name of the Master, Yahushua, I pray. So be it. So be it. So be it. To those of you on YouTube, we thank you once again for joining us on this midweek gathering. I pray again that you are being encouraged, that you are being edified, and that you are being challenged, that you understand that you're not a Yashulim according to the flesh. Only, we are only Yashulim according to the Ruach. Until the next time, until the next time, and prayerfully that would be on the Shabbat, Yahuwah Barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor unto you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. Thus you shall put my name on the children of Yashua'al, and I myself shall Barak them. So be it, so be it, so be it. Shalom.